All right, winding down the first day here at the CES show 2018 at the Sands Hotel. I'm talking to Lieutenant Kenneth Link, Lieutenant. Mon Monroe Township, New Jersey. And Paul. Paul Roberts, Division Chief, Boise, Idaho. All right, so what we've done today is shared some information with them about the Rolls Domino Digital Communicator. In terms of law enforcement, first responders, and what they think are, where they think it might find a place in today's environment. Paul, tell us a little bit about, give us some feedback. Yeah, so we uh, took a look at your device, we talked with you about it, and I certainly think that uh, there's a lot of discussion to have going forward, and there's a potential to use these in what I'll call special operations or unique scenarios like water rescue or hazmat or technical rescue. Uh, I oversee a few of those teams in Boise, Idaho, and I think this might have some uh, practical application for us to look at. Great, great. And currently, right now, the radio systems that you guys are using, are they hybrid systems? Do they pair with other systems? 900 megahertz versus 800 megahertz, 400. What bands are you guys using? Now? Well, today in Boise, Idaho, we're using a 700 megahertz trunk system. It's a Project 25 compliance system. Uh, many agencies are similar to us in using that. Uh, it's a statewide system. Um, it is uh, not as, um, uh, say, user-friendly as a conventional world where any radio can get on it. Very specific authorizations have to be provided to allow that radio on the trunk communication system. Okay. That's what we're using in Boise, Idaho. So basically you are pairing with those devices when it's necessary, though? Yeah. With other yeah. interface devices? Yeah, we can take that radio, we can gateway it into other technologies uh, for uh, various different types of other uses. Okay, awesome. And, and I just want to ask uh, Lieutenant Link, yes. where, where do you find this uh, device? What kind of uses do you think you'd find for this? I see it used extensively in the urban search and rescue environment where you have um, large search teams deploying to building collapses, uh, natural man-made disasters, as well as I, I think you have a, a niche there for some law enforcement applications where some, uh, some surveillance, some um, undercover work, clandestine type things where uh, plainclothes officers, agents are involved in, in, in their type of work where they need to be have that communication concealed. And what we talked about earlier it was appealing that you could interface into things such as you know eye, earbud type things and that application to me in law enforcement would be very happy to see that. Great, great, great. So Paul, I've got another question for you. Out of the box today, do you see a possibility for this working in any of your groups, with, with any of the groups that you deploy? Yeah, I think that uh, we could have some discussions using that, uh, this device uh, with our hazmat team, maybe even our technical rescue team. I would hesitate to say with our water rescue dive team because it's not waterproof, right. but certainly technical rescue hazmat, I think there's some opportunities to us, uh, for us to have some discussion in the future. Right. So in terms of deploying these teams, okay, how many guys in a hazmat team? Oh, we can run six to 12 people on a hazmat team. Really depends on the size and the complexity of that incident. But uh, on shift, we have about 10 to 15 people per shift. So it is important for those individuals to speak to one another or to speak with someone offsite, or both? Both. We would uh, have a core group of people talking uh, collectively together, and then maybe one person from that group speaking to a larger or a greater network of people that may be uh, much further away, miles to even maybe in another part of the, the, the country. Okay, right. All right, great, 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 great. And again, you were talking about covert missions. Mm -hmm. So in terms of that, would that be, um, what type of law enforcement teams would that be? Would that be detective units? I foresee uh, undercover. It in undercover detective units. A lot of your federal agencies may find it appealing because a lot of those uh, federal agencies are doing all that undercover work all the time. So there's plenty of surveillance going on. Uh, that's their mission, a covert and overt operation and, and tactical communications for those kind of law enforcement operations. I could see uh, a lot of people doing, you know, um, crime prevention and, uh, you know, a lot of law enforcement sensitive material in, in, in urban areas and things like that, so. Great, great, great. Well, you know what, I appreciate both of you guys today. It's been amazing. Paul, well, thank you very much. For uh, future discussions, thank you. Good. And thank you Lieutenant Link, thank appreciate you very it. much. Thank I you. do appreciate it.